Hi, I was just playing with my speak and spell, the iPhone of its day. Hello, righteous people. This is HQ Trivia, and it's 80s night. We're taking you back to a decade that started with just three TV channels on air in the UK. No satellite, and where a lot of people still had black and white sets. Just 5% of people could record programs because they had a VCR. The most popular music format was cassette. And personal computers with a BBC Micro in your school, or maybe the Sinclair Spectrum in your house. Alan Sugar was in his 30s making Amstrads. Or maybe you were one of the millions that had a Commodore 64. It's 64 kilobytes of RAM, less than one five hundred thousandth of my laptop's memory today. This was the decade when hair got big, shoulder pads got big, mobile phones were just making an appearance and they were massive. But basically, if you wanted to reach someone, you used your landline. Or if you were a yuppie, maybe you sent a fax. Synth pop was also big, and if you wanted a big Fairlight synth, it would cost you the equivalent of 1,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds. I'm Beric Livingston. We're going to help you save up because we have a prize of 1,000 pounds, and it is yours to win or split if you can answer 12 80s trivia questions correctly. Get a question right to stay in the game, get one wrong, and you can most definitely watch, but unless you have an extra live, wham, you are out. Let's go straight on to Q1. What was the venue for the UK's 1985 Live Aid concert? Wembley Stadium, number 87 bus to Clapham, Orkney Islands. This was the huge charity concert with 1.9 billion viewers around the world. Now, it seems to hold 70,000 people during rush hour, but we're not after the bus here. The home football refuses to return to is Wembley Stadium. Yeah, Wembley for Live Aid, 138,343 of you getting that right. The simultaneous US concert was in Philadelphia with Phil Collins playing both. He got helicoptered to Heathrow, took a Concorde to New York, got another helicopter to Philadelphia. On the way in the Concorde, he met Cher, who didn't know anything about Live Aid. It's an amazing story. Q2, which of these events occurred in Berlin in November 1989? First hipster sighting, the fall of the wall, invention of sausages. Yeah, back in 89, a huge event. Berlin may be full of hipsters now, but it was rather a different place in the 80s. More B&Q than a barbecue, it was the fall of the wall. Yeah, that huge ideological and physical divide between East and West. 133,033 of you getting that right. I'm liking all the threes there. Germany was finally reunited between East and West, making it even harder to beat them at football. Coming up on Sunday is our big game with an £8,000 prize. Meanwhile, we will say a hello to Amy and Kobe and family playing from a restaurant in Tenerife, to amazing Julie, maker of incredible Bombay potato, to Sophie, who got her place on a midwifery course, congratulations, to Gemma, happy 28th birthday, and to Julie Pinnock from Bournemouth, turning 80 this week, and finally a nod to the Queen of Pop, Madge. Hit our screens in 83 and is 660 today. Q3. What make of car was Kit in the original Knight Rider TV series? Pontiac Jeep Mini. Yeah, these cars were sold to the show for one dollar each, which is a good job because they wrecked about nine of them per season. He went mini with his speedos, but Hasselhoff went a little bigger with his wheels. Speeding past at shin height, Kit was a Pontiac. Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, 117,000 of you knew that. This was the 80s. So of course, Kit had an Blade evil twin called a shadowy slide into the dangerous the world of a man who does not exist. Ah, uh, Q4. According to the lyrics of a popular sitcom theme, which of these places was magnifique? Shepherd's Bush, Mile End, Hookie Street. Bit of French from a series known for its linguistic love. Calling any of them magnifique is a push, but this is only fools and horses we're talking about. Better at picking than pecking. It's Hookie Street. Yeah, 81,075 of you knew that. You won't find Hookie Street in your A to Z, though, as it's a slang term for anywhere people sell stolen goods. David Jason was third choice for Del Boy. They originally wanted Jim Broadbent, but David Jason was obviously brilliant, so good choice in the end. Q5, the lead singer of which act wore a black eye mask on the cover of their breakthrough album? Tears for Fears, Eurythmics, Pet Shop Boys. 
Yep, this was way before Beyonce donned her lazy black butterfly mask. The photo on the cover of Please was tiny, but neither the Pet Shop Boys wore masks. More sweet dreams than sobby nightmares, it's Eurythmics. Eurythmics, the right answer, 45,349 of you knowing your 80s bands there. Annie zorroed up on the cover of Sweet Dreams, a look she repeated on the follow-up, Touch. Okay, Q6. In 1980, who shot JR? This guy was shot in season three, and it was not revealed until season four, episode four, a whole eight months later. It had the whole world on its toes. The only question that mattered in the 80s, but who dropped the daddy of Dallas? His ironically accurate mistress, it was Kristen. Kristen shot JR. 21,365 of you knew it. An estimated 300 million people worldwide tuned in to find out, including, allegedly, the Queen Mother. All right, 70,000 of you still playing, 21,000 of you actually still in the game, with 3,917 of you using extra lives to get back in. Q7, which of these was released during the height of the Rubik's Cube craze? Rubik's Prism, Rubik's Snake, Rubik's Ladder. Yeah, these were an enormous deal back in the 80s. 350 million of them were sold worldwide. I've never actually done one of them before. It doesn't seem that hard. I just you slide this kind of over here. Um, oh, yeah, uh, it was the Rubik's Snake. Yep, 11,760 of you got that right. <sighs> not too hard, really. The snake is not a problem to be solved, man. It's like a tool to test out ideas of shape in space. Deep stuff from Mr. Rubik there. On to Q8. Which actor finished second in an international juggling competition in the early 80s? Mark Ruffalo, Matthew McConaughey, and Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, they've got an international juggling association which has had conventions since 1948. Ruffalo has juggled countless baddies as the Hulk, but that's more CGI than Cirque du Soleil. Better at scrubbing in than stripping off its Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, Patrick Dempsey. 5,443 of you got that right. Not quite a savage question, but a little bit beastly. The Grey's Anatomy star finished behind Anthony Gatto, who's considered the best technical juggler of all time. Patrick Dempsey, like the second best juggler of all time. Amazing. Q9. Where did Presidents Reagan and Gorbachev hold the first of their summit meetings in the 80s? Geneva, Reykjavik, Helsinki. Gorbachev won a Nobel Peace Prize, of course, and also won a Grammy with Bill Clinton and Sophia Loren, of all people, doing Peter and the Wolf, and also starred in a Pizza Hut advert. What a guy. Well, back in the 80s, the Cold War was still at full pelt, but where did these two meet to warm things up a bit? The toastiest of this trio, it was Geneva. Yes, Geneva, the conventional answer, 1,824 of you getting that right, 4,800 eliminated, I think we'll call that Savage. Savage question, the first of the 80s show. On Q9, a lot of you going for Reykjavik. They did actually meet in Reykjavik a little later in the decade. We aren't sure who swiped right first, but their date led to the end of both the Cold War and the Soviet Union. So romantic. Q10, which of these was one of the first commercial disposable cameras released in the late 80s? The flick, the flex, the fling. Disposable camera ideas have gone back quite a long way. Back in 49, there was one made of cardboard. And in 66, there was one made of Bakelite, but this was like the first commercial release that actually took off. They allowed everyone to flex their photography muscles, but what did Kodak call them? Bit of fun and you're done. They called it the fling. Yeah, fling for victory. Ooh, just 525, you got that right. Another savage question. Question sauvage and question 10. Yeah, 1520 of you thinking it was flick. Well, this camera was flung at us back in 87. The fling could only take 24 photos. That's barely enough to get one semi-decent selfie. Ah, oh, the 80s. Q11. Which actor was replaced by Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future after just a few weeks of filming? Kiefer Sutherland, Matthew Modine, Eric Stoltz. Yeah. Back to the Future. Amazing movie. Marty started to fade from his flambly photograph, but who faded out of the film altogether? Traveling back to his day job, it was Eric Stoltz. Yeah, they tried to get Michael J. Fox in the first place, 
but he was on family ties. 504 of you, knowing that, they went for Eric Stoltz and they had to change their minds. Okay. 1.21 gigawatts at the ready, because we're great scutting into the final round. 10 people using their extra lives. 504 winning Q11. 1,000 pounds on the table. Everything to play for. Q12. Of these three names, which was the most popular for baby boys born in England and Wales in 1984? Martin Gareth Dean. Yeah, a lot of good people born in 84. Scarlett Johansson, Katy Perry, Prince Harry. Berwick uh, hasn't been a popular name since the 1500s, but which of these was most common in 84? Martin's doing the best today, but it was a different story back in the 80s. Winning then, but bailing now, it's Gareth for the win. And passing through the Gareth Gates, 170 winners today. One hundred and seventy of you getting all the way through our quiz of 80s trivia. We had politics, we had music, we had technology, we had games, we had it all. And now you have five pounds, 88 pence or five pounds and 89 pence. You could probably buy a house for that back in the 80s. But for now, you can buy a packet of sweets and enjoy yourselves. Well done to Shaq080, who's got some lush palm trees and sunset going on, to Bella Torn, to Money UK, making some more, and Pedestal Sink. That's my favorite winning bathroom accessory of the game. Thank you for sharing that little slice of the 80s with us. It was great to see you. I'm Barry Livingston. Come and find me on Twitter. Be lovely to hear how you got on today. We have our big game on Sunday night with the £8,000 prize. Meanwhile, we're back tomorrow at 3 p.m. with our regular game, trivia questions on a whole range of subjects, another £1,000 prize, and lots of fabulous factoids. Till then, have a great Thursday night. Sweet dreams. <laughs>